I'm Cassie. I'm Taylor. I'm Brian. And I'm Nikhil. And for our group project, we chose the author W.B. Du Bois, and we're going to interview students on campus to find some relevance in his ideologies that agitation and protest are the only ways to create social change. Um, like mobilization, like getting people involved and like interested in things that are going on and like relating it to their experience and what they're going through, I guess. Um, my first step would be like outreach, I guess, like making sure that like, or like reaching out to other people who see that as an issue as well and like raising those concerns and making it relevant to their like experiences so that they also feel a need to like care about the issue. Um, I think unity is a big thing, I think in terms of creating um, successful movements. So I think if students participate in clubs and organizations that already exist and use those um, programs and modes of just like communication with like the greater campus, then like change could be could be done. Okay. On this campus, um, I would want to say you want to make sure you get to know and start bothering the higher ups. Make sure you walk into their office and like metaphorically kick down the door and say, hey, by the way, my name my name is so and so, and since my name is Kamala, uh. Uh, can I speak to someone who was involved in, let's say, just, you know, scholarships or something like that? And you make make sure that you state your problem and you keep going back to the people who are involved so that they can know that someone is actually trying to change things. Um, really just getting all the students loud about whatever it is you want to make change. I mean, as we've seen in the past, like, uh, unfortunately, with the mold situation, like when all the students came together, I mean, there were protests everywhere, all the students getting too loud to be ignored sort of thing. Um, that's eventually what made the change happen. Like you get everybody um, involved in something, like with it, like in a cause. Uh, that's usually what generates change. Because uh, when you got too many voices yelling at you, you have no other choice but to listen. Um, kind of like that same logic or idea, but like expanding it a little bit. Like, okay. for example, if you're like talking about like the environment, like finding a way to like relate that to somebody else's individual experience, so they feel inclined to like care about the issue and actually take part and take action, I guess. Um, okay. I think in like that similar vein, I think just gathering um, grassroots um, organizations, um, just coming together collectively with as many people as possible and with a clear, um, I guess, mission and like principle that you want to achieve will help um, in creating change like nationally. In America, it's got to start with communities, man. Uh, if so many communities all repeat the same message, that means you, you, you know, the, you know, the higher ups again, once again, Congress, all the old, all the old people that happen to be in charge of this place, uh, they'll, they'll they'll know that oh, so they actually are going to get loud about this now. Now we actually do need to pay attention, and you, you need to keep pushing them to make the right choices, and not again make decisions that kind of equate to blowing us off. And we don't want to be we don't want to be satisfied for the time being. We want to be satisfied for the long run really the same concept uh, just on a bigger scale kind of how uh, Kai said um, getting a bunch of different communities all together screaming the same thing because um, uh, it's really just you got to keep pushing until they listen um, and the more and more people you get screaming the same thing at the same time I mean you can't do anything but listen and eventually you have to change or else well nothing will calm down um, so you just have to be persistent and loud about it Um, yes, because if people don't think there's a problem or if they're not like, if they're not like motivated to actually address an issue, then they're not going to address the issue. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when people are not paying attention, one way to get attention very effectively is like through protests and like making sure that, you know, like people are like, is like be, are being paid attention to or that right. people are listening to them. Why? Um, I do agree with agitation, um, and protest because... I mean, in the same vein as what I just said before, like I think the more people you have that are willing to express their discomfort um, with how things are going and the more that you are um, overt in your expression of, um, I guess, how unjust things are going. So that involves like agitation and not necessarily violence, but you know, just being firm and um, letting your beliefs across. I think that's the only way that people will listen to your cause. And protest, again, great thing. That means a large group of people all repeating the same message means that there is something that needs to be changed and that needs to be, you know, fixed. So therefore, you know, the government knows that, okay, this group isn't happy. What is it that they really want and what is it that we can really do? So yes, I do agree. Agitation, brilliant. Protest, also brilliant.
Absolutely. Uh, um, I absolutely agree. Uh, there's never been change without protest. Uh, like, we wouldn't be here right now if our people that came for us didn't band together and, well, get in the streets, pro protest, get loud, get so agitating to the point where they had to change because we weren't going to stop. It was only going to be more, more of us screaming louder what we want, what we need. And yeah, I feel like that's the only effective way to create change in a positive way.